Sorry. We'll call the select board meeting for Wednesday, February 16th, 2021 to order. Uh, we have John Muscovitz, Joyce Chunglo, Jane Nevinsmith, and David Phil here. Amy will not be here tonight. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and all votes will be taken via roll call. Tonight, we're going to go right into executive session and we will reconvene an open session afterwards and continue on with the rest of the business on the meeting. Um, let's see, I'll read motion. The... Oh, do I need to do a motion to go into executive session? Uh, let me read this real quick. Um, okay. Select board will enter into executive session pursuant to MGL chapter 30A, section 21A3 to discuss litigation regarding the matter of Hieronymus Peter versus town of Hadley, where discussion in open session would have a detrimental effect on the town's litigation position and the chair so declares. Um, so I need a, a motion to go to executive session. I'll make a motion to go to executive session and to reconvene in open session. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. As chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. And Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Devin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Wiscavitz? Yes. Thank you. All right, and this should be relatively quick for everybody that's waiting, so we'll try to be as quick as possible. All right, uh, well, thank you for everybody for waiting. Sorry it took a little longer, but we just needed to get that out of the way. Um, next on the agenda, we have the Tri-Board meeting, 3.1 FY23 budget presentation. And hopefully everyone hasn't fallen asleep and finance committee is still here. Dr. McKenzie's here, so hopefully some others are. There's Valerie. All right, Amy Dillon. All right, looks like everybody's here. Um, all right, so uh, Carolyn, do you wanna start? Yeah, just for technical purposes, can uh, the finance committee call your meeting to order? Okay, so I'd like to call the finance committee meeting to order. Um, Today is the uh, 16th at uh, 628. Is that good? Have them vote. Have them vote. Oh, you want to vote? Okay. Yep. All right. Can uh, Jennifer, you want to roll call? I would love to. <laughs> as soon as you make a motion with the first oh, and yes. a second. May I have a motion, please? A motion. Second, Val. You're, you're muted, Val. Sorry, uh, I second it. <laughs> okay, roll call the Biden. Yes. Hood. Valerie. Oh yes, yes. I'm sorry. I, I've got Alexi kind of texting me, and he's gonna he's gonna try to uh, join us as soon as he can. Mans Barstow, is that right? Yes, Bar Barstow Mans. Barstow Mans, thank you. Did I say yes? Yes, yeah. Thank you. Okay, you want me to go ahead, David? Go ahead. Everybody's here. And I just wanna recognize Annie's here as well. So, um, all right, good evening, everybody. It's, uh, it's been two and a half months of preparing this budget for you that you're, you're gonna see. Um, I'm gonna be tag teaming a little bit with Linda tonight. And I just wanted to uh, thank the, fi the in-house fi finance team who has been so helpful. Uh, every single Tuesday, I've shared this before, that they have um, met and we have gone over our budgets, our revenues, our year to date. Um, and I just wanna thank them so much for helping us get to this point. Um, they they kind of teed it up, Susan, Dan, Linda, they teed this up so I could present this. So. We're going to, um, what I'm going to do is um, we're going to take a look at the budget, where the increases are, and then it's going to lead into Linda telling you um, how we're going to pay for it. So that's what we're going to do. 
I'm not going line item by line item with this presentation. I'm gonna go division by division and I'm gonna highlight where the increases are and then give you a general overview of what reflects some of those increases. Um, I do wanna just give this a little bit of a preface. Uh, I met uh, with every single department um, and boards that had a bigger, a bigger budget and Linda assisted me with the larger budgets where we literally went line item by line item. I, I have to thank the, the department heads and those chairs of those boards because we really, I did, I don't wanna um, share the, the blame on approach to this. And we went line item by line item. And then we went year to date on their expenses, which would have brought us up to like uh, January 1st to see where they were and to see if they were spending that money and if not, why? Or if they were overspending the line item, why? Trying to just steer everybody into that, um, to be able to budget that line item appropriately and not just worry about the, bo the bottom line of that budget balancing. Um, we had some new staff and some new support staff that sat in some of those meetings and it helped them immensely. And I truly believe after doing this for two years that we're gonna, we're gonna be good next year. This, I think that the budgets that came to us and remember, I just asked them what they needed. I didn't give them any guidelines. I didn't give them a certain percentage. Um, you guys authorized me and we're okay with that. And I just wanna thank the department because they were extremely, extremely respectful of that. There are increases. If you remember, we've kind of been stagnant for three years and, and suppressed in, in trying to match any of our growth needs to um, the budget based on the impact of COVID. Um, and I just can't tell you enough how uh, patient they were. So I just wanted to thank them and acknowledge that. So Linda, if you can pull up- uh, Carolyn, general... can I, Carolyn, can I just mention that there wasn't anything that I could print off of. I didn't, wasn't able to get a hard copy of anything to have in hand. I know you're gonna show it on, on your screen tonight, but there wasn't anything I could print out to have in my hand to review afterwards. Is there gonna be anything that- Yeah, you're gonna get the, yep, yeah, you're gonna get the whole book with every breakdown of every department. Um, we're, we're gonna try to have it ready for next week. And honestly, okay. um, we, were, we were working on this up until about 15, you know, quarter, quarter of six. So it's okay. been um, numbers change and um, we just constantly were reviewing what we had worked on. So okay, yes, that's fine. Yeah, okay. that hard, that big white notebook you will be getting with the okay. details. But we thought, we thought this approach, I could just highlight where some of those increases are and what's behind those increases. Um, okay. And also some, some areas of concern that I have that we'll be looking to address, but okay. so. Thank you. There we go. So if you remember, um, David Nixon um, broke down, uh, did a budget series and broke down pretty much divisions and categories. So that's where I've, that's what we're looking at right now. And so um, we can go, you know what, Linda, I can't see that last, let me move my guy. Which one? Okay. Can you, can you no, see that? Yeah, the I, I, I just got to move all you people around. Yeah, um, I, I, I can't see what you see. So it's, it's. Uh, oh, okay, it's okay. So I just, let me know. It should start where you can see general as a, a fund as the lead in yeah. and the last column is the change, the white column change FY22 to 23. Is that showing? I'm seeing that, yes. I okay. Everybody else is as well. So I'm just, I'm just gonna show you and in, in, there's gonna be a further down in my presentation. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of break down a little bit, even go into a deeper level of what these increases reflect. But you can see general government, we've got that 38,467. You can see a significant increase, 375,478 with public, public safety. Education, so I just wanna remind you that um, the school has been, the school committee has been extremely generous the past two years. Um, this is so this is a very modest number based on what they haven't asked us for and given back to us. Um, public works is up 94,000, human services 25,000, which is library, COA, recreation. I think I've got them all right. Um, oh, nope, culture and recreation. So, see it is COA is just human services and board of health, maybe. Sorry, I don't have my breakdown right in front of me. Um, and Linda did really want me to show you that there was no increase in debt payments. <laughs> she was very proud of that. Um, 
and the benefits in other. And we're gonna talk a little bit about these, some of these costs that we can't control. Next one. So you wanna see the, the second breakdown of it. Yeah, do you have anything to add to that last one? No, that's good. This is, um, if you recall last year, we went through and it's a very long chart of every single department and with the sub, and these are the subtotals for each of the sections. So, um, so we thought this would be a, an inter a, a better way to give an overview of what it is rather than getting bogged down in the details of each department. But as Joyce mentioned, you, you do like to see everything and you will be getting every department's mm -hmm. budget um, uh, very shortly as soon as we can. So I think that's it for this section. Um, I will move it to, now I don't, I think that you wanted to start with yep, that. The, the, okay, a, budget a, increase. A, a different way of seeing the, breaking down the budget increases. Yeah, I really like this. I think it, it just kind of, it, it was easier to see what the increases were in the impact on the budget. And what I wanted to point out is, as you can see, the benefits OPEB um, and the school budget, you, we get that bottom line. That is, um, and the general expense increases, a lot of these expenses um, take up the bulk. It's two thirds of the, of the budget. And benefits in OPEB and we can't control those costs. Those, we, it is what it is. So that we can't control that, that's increase. And that's a huge increase. Um, the general expense increase, that is basically looking at everything else besides salary amongst the town. And you guys know in your own house, the fuel's going up, or your groceries are going up, supplies, we definitely have, we're, we're dealing with supply chain issues. So we've, we have had a significant um, expectation and prediction of the increase in fuel, and as well as all the other supplies that impact all of the budgets. And then you're, I wanted to show you the, 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 the pretty significant difference in the impact of the pub, public safety. Um, when we meet with the finance committee, we're gonna, I'm gonna dig a little deeper and kind of go over what's impacting public safety. I think some of you are gonna be aware of what some of that is, um, but we are seeing extremely high turnover. We, we've got to address that. And that is one of my areas of concern is um, where our public safety is with wages and um, uh, the culture right now. It's a very difficult environment to be working in right now and mandates from the state that are gonna be coming up for training and for officers. So um, we, you know, it's something that we're gonna be con continuing to address. So is that why? that why that's blank there on the public safety because I was hoping to I know eventually down the road we will address that and that's my goal also but I see a blank spot there um, that's the that's part of the if you put other town departments and public safety together that's the 304 268 right but it wasn't what was in public safety totally yeah. these are just the increases just the yeah. increases Okay. Yeah, that'll have, we'll do further. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's 304,000 is the total of the increases on the town side. And by that, I just mean not the school because school is within their budget. Um, yeah. And so two thirds of that, a lot more than that, I guess, of the, um, of the staffing increases is in public safety and the other town departments together are the 84. So that's 304. So, um, and okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. So then we can go to the Helen, next. Can I ask a question mm -hmm. about the public safety? Um, are, would you say have have you heard from other towns? Are, are oh, yeah. all towns struggling with this issue? With I, yeah, I can. I absolutely. It, on, unfortunately, it's the smaller towns that are getting impacted by it. There is, um, you know, Mike has. An incredible uh, did an incredible presentation of how um, it's these small towns are getting impacted. The police reform bill in itself had it's I think there was like 180 different categories 
um, and a lot of the requirements are not funded. There's no funding for it. And it's, um, it's very stressful right now for the police officers as well. And we are having a significant turnover. We lost uh, four officers in three months and they're going to higher paying uh, towns and not, not easy towns to work in. Um, and we have, it's a huge cost for Hadley to bring on a new officer, train them, get them in the academy, do the mentoring, get the certifications. It's, it's a significant cost to the town. So it is a, it's definitely an area that um, I am concerned about and we will need to address as a town. We just gotta find a solution. But right now this is what we could fit in the budget. Okay. So. We'll yes. still do that more. Yes. And did okay. you want? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I talked a little bit about this, but um, one of the things I wanted to talk about really is if t looking at the town hall and other department wages, these aren't, there might be one person, one position, the COA. Um, Jane is, I don't know if you know, but Jane works like full time over at the, for free over at the COA. And what we're seeing, and I have seen it in my past job, is you don't see Jane volunteers anymore. And what's, what's happening is you're, you're, you have a need to replace that with, with paid staff. Um, the volunteers now that are coming up are like, I'll work a couple hours here, I'll work a couple hours there. And there's gonna be a huge gap when, when Jane steps away from that role. So the COA has requested um, uh, some admin assistance to kind of fill that gap. So that, that is probably the only new position. The rest of them are looking at the skills that we have in town. You have some talented employees um, where we can start to share some positions, but it means adding some hours. Um, we did have one position that was in building inspection that had been um, paid for by the CARES Act. Um, and she has turned into being an extremely valuable employee. And, and we're looking at having her help planning department um, planning is really looking to get more assistance. So we're just looking at trying to share some of these positions. So um, we, it, this part was kind of exciting actually to see what skills we had in town and to have even a couple hours from an employee who isn't at 37 and a half do some, some work for another, to assist another department. So um, this is how we're chipping away at some of the lack of assistance that has hasn't, we haven't had some, the assistance that we've needed for some of these departments. Can you just chip away a little bit, not going into full detail because this is just an overview tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, why the Board of Health for 22,000, what does that entail? So Board of Health right now. So first, the, the very first thing I'm gonna say, which you guys all know is Route 9 in Hadley is West Springfield, Riverdale Road in West Springfield or Memorial Drive. So in a town this size, we have been relying this, we did it for a year, I think, um, because the, the board members that you've had in the past several years, you've had working board members who had that skill set who could be doing the inspections. But as, you're, as that board has changed, you don't have that skill set anymore. And for all of the establishments you have, you have I think Jennifer, we figured it was about 180 food establishments. To not have a health agent is, is, is really, it's an important thing to have in the town. So we've been contracting out with a, with a uh, company called Western Mass Food Safety to do a very limited amount um, of inspections. They, they do about 100 annual inspections. They do some pools, some other, some other things that fit under, in, under the health inspection but it, it's not enough for Hadley, it really isn't. And so um, we are looking to, the Board of Health has requested um, to get a health agent in, instead of the contract. And it's really just about the same price that it's um, for that cost, but there will be obviously some additional um, costs needed for that, but th they are in really desperate need for a health agent to do those inspections. So were we paying um, this other agency to do our inspection so that this money is going into that 22,000? Yes, it is. That's all I needed to know. Okay. All right. Um, about library and parking rec. Library, um, the trustees um, 
had um, put a added some hours to their youth coordinator. I don't know if that's the exact name, but um, the youth program coordinator. They had brought that per, that part time position up to twenty seven in the fall, which they have the authority to do. So we, but we now need to bring it before the town to support that increase in services. And then what was the other one you said, Parks and Reg? Uh, we hired Greg for 30 hours. Um, Greg has brought in an incredible increase in programs. Look at the, look at the skate park. I mean, that yeah. is just, to me, that is just amazing to see that when you drive through town. And now there's lights. Um, that's just a, that's just a small portion of what he's brought. He is yeah. working. He is trying to keep it into 30 hours, but he is here almost every night. Um, whether if it's a basketball game, he's got adult basketball going on. He's um, starting programs. He's going to have a February vacation camp. Uh, he is doing a ton with, and it, again, another board that has, has changed where you have board members coming in who are not that board member who's coming into the office and doing work. Those days are gone. He's these yep. life, life has changed. So he's yep. doing everything right now from all the admin, all the registration, um, everything. So and we're looking to increase that to 40 hours. That's to all 37 and a half. To yep. 37 and a half right now. Yep. That's, yep. Certain. That's fine with me. No problem. And they also got the board members that are doing a little bit more than they should too. So they're putting in yep. extra time. They're starting better programs and they're really moving forward with it quite well. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And wages, that's just a uh, fire. That's just with the annual, is that? Uh... That's the EMT. EMT, okay. Mm -hmm. That goes together with starting the, um, uh, getting the ambulance on the road. Yep. So I, I don't know what the timing is for the two, but they should be coming together about the same time. Yep. Okay. Sounds is this, good. Is that one dispatcher? One dispatcher. Well, I think it is one dispatch and one or two officers or it's, one and a half. It's a officer and I think a sergeant. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then and dispatch. Oh. Okay. All right. So Linda, I think am I handing this back over to you, right? Yeah, Carolyn. You're gonna says, show us how we're gonna get there. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the fun part. Okay. So this is this is the this is a summary uh, year by year, going back to FY19. Let me start with where we are right now. Um, we have revenues of about eight, eight, of uh, eighteen point six million dollars. I'm going to flip over to that just briefly. Again, I'm not showing you that big long chart of uh, where all these numbers come from. These are the general categories, and you'll be getting both. But um, rather than go through that tonight, our property taxes thirteen point eight million. Um, they're going up this, uh, this about the same as they did the year before, with uh, I believe some extra some extra new growth and um, uh, some, some add-ons like that. State aid hasn't been going up by as much as we feel that it ought to, given that they're supposed to be doing well too. So we're hopeful that that will increase, but there's a small increase from 22 there now. Our biggest jump has been in local receipts. We're uh, expecting to have three point, we're projecting 3.4 million in local receipts. As you can see, we projected Linda, two point Linda, could you shrink the screen slightly so we can yep. see that yep. last column? Oh, I'm sorry. How's yes, that? Thank you. Whoops. Perfect. Whoops. Oops. Yeah. Is right. Oh. Okay. You know what? I have to change a uh, margin here. Let's see if that helps. Can you see all of that? Almost. Okay. Keep let changing me... the margin. Actually, Jane, it might be your computer. But even so, she it might not just be hers. Right. Um, if others, if, if it's happening to her, it's happening to others. And I want to make sure people can see. If you could put our pictures across the top instead of down the side, that would also take care of it. Oh, I didn't know that you could see where my pictures are. No, I think that, Jane, Jane, true. you have to do that. Jane, if you if you hover your mouse over the top of the of, of the people, 
yeah. and click on that black thing, you can move it around. You're going to have to move it as she goes through it. Oh, okay. So right I now, that. it's all Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah, those are your pictures. <laughs> okay, is this visible now? Yes, thank you. Okay, so I went through taxes, state aid, okay, local receipts, 3.4 million we're projecting. This year we projected 2.7. At this point in the year, we already have 1.7 million in, which is over, which is 64% of our annual project, projection. Uh, earlier years, the last two years, we had 40 and 50% of our annual, um, of our projection in by the end of January. So we are doing well there and we felt pretty comfortable. We, as you'll see, as you know, from the, all the lines that we have that go into local receipts, um, that includes hotel, motel, um, uh, the marijuana, the cannabis, um, the, and then all the collections from the departments and various other uh, pilot payments. That's a large category that, am I in the right place? Okay. Um, and, and they're uh, really everything literally is looking healthy. So if you can compare that a little bit more going back, we had, we had actually collected 2.8 million last year. And then our last, what we call our last good year, you know, 20 before we got into COVID, we were at three, 3.183 million. So this is the first time then in three years that we're going to be able to exceed FY20 and, um, and we should do well there. So that puts us at 18,178,120. Then we do the en enterprise chargebacks, which um, uh, we're using the same formula we have the last couple of years um, as, as, best as, as best as I can. And I'm coming in a little bit lower. Um, in that area. So the amount of revenues that we're starting with without any other transfers, without using free cash or anything else, the actual revenues for the town's general fund is 18, 18,612,043. So I'll go back over to that summary page. There you go. There's the 18,6 in revenues. And then the budget with the increases uh, that were shown is coming in at 19,424. Um, that leaves a gap of 812,938. That's, um, that, we never like seeing these gaps, but look back over the last few years. This is, this is, this is how it's been going for us. Um, uh, this is just a request column, ignore that column, I'm sorry. But this past year, uh, at this time, uh, or, or going into our, going into town meeting to balance the budget, we had a, a gap between straight revenues and expenditures of one over a million dollars. The year before, almost $1.3 million. That's not what we were aspiring to. Those are the problems that we were dealing with. So you see, we actually have significantly less of a problem right now, and we are intentionally making some increases in the budget. So that's, that's, um, that's better than we've been for a while. This is really where we'd rather be, where we were in 20. That's there's a deliberate effort. If, um, I recently went back to 19 because I do remember so much we were making an effort to close the gap between revenues and expenditures. And look at the progress we were making before COVID hit. We had a gap of 700,000 in 19 and then only 300,000 in 20. That's where we wanna be. So if, if we think of this 23 as our new 19, hopefully we're gonna continue to go in that direction. That is, that is where we ought to be, but Honestly, I don't think I ever remember us really coming in at that point. So how, what do we do when we have those gaps? Um, or actually, um, yeah, what we do is, here's our categories over here, transfers from other funds. We have in the past used stabilization. Um, that worked for us and we were able to fill it in this past year. We are, our, our stabilization account has fully recovered. So we, um, we, do, uh, we do work on on these um, free cash, we've we pretty much always used uh, free cash um, to balance the budget. We are trying to use less free cash, and um, let me get back to that in just a moment. And this last year, this last this past year, when we had the ARPA funds that we received from um, from the government, we were able to use a portion of it in what's called a revenue replacement funding. And that really saved our skin in FY22 that we were able to use the ARPA replacement funds and bridge that gap fully. What we're proposing for this year is we have one more year of ARPA. We clearly have to wean off of it because it isn't gonna be there for 24. Um, but we, um, 
so we're proposing at this point, I mean, these two in yellow here, we can do some fluctuating between them. Um, uh, we've got time between now and town meeting to figure out the right balance for us. But at this point, if we could limit the ARPA uh, replacement funding to 400, we would not only have it for other, have the balance for other projects, more of the balance for other projects, but we might be able to carry some into yet another year if we needed it. But we're still, we, we just wanna do what's, what's right. So we're working on that one. And now free cash uh, at this point is about 410,000 for balancing the budget. And let me tell you the difference between this free cash figure and this one and this one and this one that we've used in every year. This year, the free cash we're using is what's already been certified. This is the balance of what was certified in July 1 last year. In every other year, what we've been doing is, see this line called anticipated rollbacks? At this point, we've been carrying a figure in the anticipated rollbacks line because that's what we expect to come back into the account at the end of this year. This is what budgets are going to turn back. They don't fully spend their money. And we'd be getting several hundred thousand dollars there. We've been counting on that to come back into the funds and then get that certified for July 1 so that in the fall, we can then use that newly certified free cash to balance the budget. We are one year ahead of the game in that category right now. This is the balance of what was certified last year. So that means we still have anticipated rollbacks ahead of us. We might have the start of a capital fund in the come fall, or we might be able to get a, a jump on, or maybe, maybe we'll decide to use less in ARPA, but we'll have some options there. Um, but the better we do with our revenue planning, our expenditure planning, we, we also risk that maybe our rollbacks won't be so quite so high because we're, can, we're, we're, getting, uh, we're getting more precise in the budgeting. So there's that. So we can't count on uh, 500,000 coming back in the way we have in other years because we're pitching the budgets a bit more, but, but something will come back. This is, this is just how it works. So, um, so that's how we would plan to get at what this point is 812. And I'm sure by the time we, we're working out a couple of things with, other, uh, with a few departments, uh, tomorrow, I expect we'll get the budgets out to every department. So in case there were any mistakes, uh, or corrections, they'll get back to us. So they will have it, um, we'll have it uh, solidified by the time we put it into the budget book. But this is where we stand at the moment. Um, and just as um, just as another interesting thing, because I like um, when you see our revenue increase uh, between from 22 to 23, our revenue increase is $1.4 million. So even as we look at the budget in incre increase, which is almost $1.2 million, that's a big increase, but so is this a big increase. And our actually the revenue increase is actually 233,000 higher than the budget increase, which means we're going in the right direction. They're going to come together. And this is the plan. We, um, we're, there is more of a leap this year in recognition of things really being suppressed and some um, problems that have resulted that have come about particularly in public safety as a result of, of our holding back. Some of these things have to be addressed and Carol has been really careful about that and you'll learn more about that in the budget as we go through the budget. Um, you go through your review, finance committee, select board. And um, um, I think is I think that's uh, that's about it. I'll go and leave it on the, the summary if you have any questions up here. Otherwise I can close screen and you can move on. Questions? No questions from me, but <laughs> just wanted to say that this looks really great. Yeah. Thanks for all the hard work. All these yeah. numbers look like they're going in the right direction. So it's it's good to see. I like the way you organized the information. It was able, I felt like I was able to take it all in. I appreciate that. Yeah. You, we feel you, like it'll, it'll, make, it'll be easier when you go back into the details that you had the overview and then you're going into the details instead of the other way around. Exactly. Yeah. You, so excited to dig into the details. <laughs> Do you have any stabilization monies, uh, what the balances are right now, Linda, or is that going to be in our book next week? Uh, the, the balance, didn't I say, Carolyn, someone's going to ask him tonight? Yeah, she did. <laughs> you had it. I thought you had it. Yeah. 
to uh, two million forty-five thousand. Okay, that's good. We're over two. That's good. Yes. And then I, how are, how are the enterprises, Linda? Uh, the enterprises. Um, should we move over to that now? Then uh, the enterprise. Where did that one go? Uh, the enterprise funds uh, the. Water and the sewer, uh, working through the uh, working through the DPW budgets have been what have been taking us, uh, us the longest, because you know there was change, yeah. you know, and um, and getting uh, control of those budgets again, not control, I mean, not out of control, but I mean getting a handle on it for, for planning purposes has been a little yeah. bit more more difficult. Um, we do have them reasonably balanced, however. I mean they're they're balanced and they're not. It's not a big. Not a big problem. Let me just scoot and have a look here. Um, if I have the, um, I think the difference in at this point, this is sort of a sneak peek, the budget's 2.4. Um, they're okay. I mean, that's the best I can say right now. They're, they're really okay. So if I look at sewer where we have uh, revenues of one, and I don't have the same charts ready, but, but I hope I will have them for your book sewer there 1.052 versus 1.062 with the with the with the reserves um, we were working at getting that down uh water has a bit a uh, bit more of a gap in it i can't remember exactly how much but they are their uh, expenditures are coming in above higher than the water revenues are however that has a much larger reserve account and public access is, uh, we're, we're really not getting, we're really gonna be running into an, an issue there in the next couple of years because their expenses are increasing as well. And we don't have the same app revenue source for that okay. um, as we do for the other. Um, I'm not quite as fully prepared on that one. I certainly have been working the numbers on that one, but it is looking like the, the receipts will cover the revenue expenditure, the plant expenditures this year in the budgets, and um, we'll dip into the reserves a bit, but we're not we're not in deep trouble in that way. And I guess I was counting on when we get to uh, we're going to be addressing more in the uh, water and sewer accounts over the next few weeks, and that I would pull these figures together in more of a summary fashion, uh, as we did with the general fund when you're having that discussion. If I could have another week or two. Fine. It just gives, gives me a general idea, Linda. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And how far out are we on uh, contract with cable? Uh, Caroline, do you know? As far as the new contract for cable, it's coming up pretty soon next year or two, isn't it? Um, David, you might have more information on that. I think we're further than that. Yeah, I think it's 2024, but mm -hmm. we, we've already started the the long process of uh, notifying Spectrum that we're going through the formal renewal process with uh, surveys will be going out to residents about problems or feedback on their current service and seeing what they can do to uh, correct issues or if we wanna go a different direction. Is this an opportunity to get a different uh, computer internet provider? Besides Beckham, is that so what you're suggesting? It, it's like everything in regulated industries, it's somewhat complicated, uh, possibly, but we basically have to show that they have not provided the level of service that they promised the town in order to drop them and go to somebody else. So that's, that's the importance of the surveys and uh, getting resident feedback. If we can say, hey, look, you've got slow service every day during dinner time or whatever, uh, what are you gonna do to fix it? And they say, well, we can't fix it. Then you know, things like that are a reason to maybe make a switch to a different company. But it, I see. It, it's a pretty complex mess to do the cable contract. Uh, to do negotiations with them is, is hard. Yeah. So maybe, maybe a new one, who knows? At this point, it's hard to say. Mm. Um, Linda, why, why I have you here, occasionally I still get questions from people about stabilization. Um, wanting to know for sure that we paid back everything that we took out during COVID. Yes. 
and yes. we're a hundred percent put the money back. Correct. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Just, that way, hopefully people see it and stop asking the question. <laughs> so we did that at a special town meeting is when we put the money back, right? We did that in the fall, 750,000 went back in the fall. Okay. Um, and uh, I know it's not on share screen right now, but uh, let's see. We had taken out 530, took out 306. Oh, but this is the second, that was the second uh, payback that we had done. We voted uh, in spring town meeting, we put back 183 and then we put back another 750. So that covers the 800 and yeah. Yes, the answer is yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes and yes. All right. Well, any, anybody else have any questions for finance, Carolyn, Linda? I don't have any I, questions. I, I, sounds like this was the approach that was helpful mm-hmm. versus going yes. department by te- department at this level. Yeah, I, I really like the way the information was organized. And I also, I actually really appreciated going over it for the first time with everybody together. So it's much more meaningful. It's much better use of my time than just reading it by myself and having questions and not really knowing the answers right away, you know, and before the, so I, I really like this format very much. Mm-hmm. The, uh... Can we ask, can I ask you, Dr. McKenzie, if, uh, how is the things going over at Hopkins with uh, school choice and things of that nature that, you know, I just would like to get a, a picture of that right now of where we set with that or kids going out, kids coming in. Sure. And Joyce, you can always ask me whatever you would like (laughs) to see all of you. Uh, So school choice, I was just looking at those numbers today. Um, We have 108 students choosing in this year to Hadley Public Schools. Um, I don't have the breakdown off the top of my head for Hadley Elementary and Hopkins Academy. That is down slightly from last year. I will say in FY19, we had a tremendous turnaround with school choice coming in. Prior to that, we've been hovering around just over 70. We hit around 94 and 96 in FY19, went up to about 112, I think. And so we're at 108 this year. Those are kids coming in. Kids going out, again, we had uh, several years back, the high point of kids going out was just uh, in the mid 60s. And now uh, this year, I think we have 40, my estimate right now, and I actually emailed the Department of Ed today to get the exact figures because going out, I don't have in my computer, right? They're not in my system, they're in someone else's system. But my estimate is around 45. So I do know for a fact 108 in, all those students are in my system and about 45 going out. We have seen a decrease in students leaving for uh, other kinds of educational experiences. Um, And we're still trying to tackle, um, I'm I'm grateful that the community has a lot of options, but I will say, I think that if we didn't have a charter option right in our geographic boundaries, we would lose far fewer students. Uh, That's, that does make it a little bit more challenging. So, um, and charters are, always uh, more challenging, not because families shouldn't have the opportunity to exercise whatever choices they think are best for their kids, but because of the way the funding formula works. Mm-hmm. Um, charters are particularly problem. Not the schools themselves for the funding formula. It's different than school choice. Overall, it's good. We have, you know, more school choices working in our favor, but how about how about our children going to Smith Volk, Annie? Annie, what's the number? So that's uh, that's decreased a bit, and I'm always, you know, I always want to be cautious of how I present this. Again, I support that parents and students should make whatever choices they think make the most sense for them. When we see a high number of students exiting the system for any reason, we sit down and ask ourselves, what could we do to make remaining in Hadley Public Schools more attractive? 
And yep. I would like to think that some of the things that we have done over the past couple of years, so we've started these various pathways programs. So we have an early college high school pathway where students can take college credit bearing college courses for free. We have um, innovation pathways where students can do internships and in business and finance and the life and environmental sciences and students seem to like this is a great deal. This year we received a grant for a future educators pathway. So these seem to be popular. We have seen a decline in students uh, exiting for even for Smith Vope. Uh -huh. um, and but we also recognize that there will always be things that career and technical education does um, uniquely and uh, mm -hmm. are designed to do that we can offer. But in yeah. general, the numbers look good. The, the biggest thing, of course, that all of this region, all of New England faces in K-12 and college education is declining enrollment, particularly when you get outside of urban centers. Um, but even those projections, I'm pleased to say that the company that does our enrollment projections is predicting a slight incremental upticks in births in Hadley. So that's great news. We like to hear that. And that looks like even a couple of years dire, but now it looks as though the projections going into like as far forward as 2033 look like they may gradually increase in terms of enrollment and births. So that's great news. Uh -huh. So do, do we have, um, has the uh, um, tuition to Smith Folk changed at all? That was the other thing I was I was wondering about. Yeah, it does. It changes every year. Uh, I would, um, again, let me underscore that I want everybody to stay in Hadley Public Schools, but I do give credit and gratitude where it's due. So I do believe that Smith Folk works very hard to be responsive and responsible to other school districts. So it does go up every year. That's to be expected, but not, um, not in a way that would make you say, oh my goodness. What the heck yeah. are they uh, we, we did have we did have that at one point when they were doing an increase back where they had you know did a quite a big increase but yeah. you, know, you know we see with the price of everything and you know and and I agree with you I I think we try to do the best that we can in Hadley and offer really good things for our students but there's always going to be kids that are going to want to do a trade and you know there's nothing wrong with that either so we try to accommodate everybody and i understand that yeah 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 so i thank you of course yeah annie i i think it probably doesn't hurt to have the wonderful sports programs that we have too we yes. do i mean i really want to say it's my job to be a champion and advocate for the school system in, our, in hadley and we have an excellent school system we have an absolutely excellent school system, but I'm also mindful of the fact that, as I said, that um, I just I I understand that families always have the right to to figure out what makes the most sense for them. But we do have great schools. We have great staff, uh, great staff. We have small class sizes. We have lots of options and opportunities. We keep trying to do new things. We're offering um, we're introducing Spanish at the elementary school right now in a very um, limited way, but every student is getting a little bit of Spanish every week. Uh, we're conscious of the fact that our biggest competition in terms of charter has to do with uh, a language immersion school. We're certainly not offering language immersion, but we're offering more opportunities and that's been received very well. So we're always trying to expand and um, do more. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So the process for going forward for the budget I think last year's worked pretty well where we let the finance committee do their thing as, as the next step. Obviously we'll get the books with all the fine line details, but uh, rather than have every department head appear in front of us, like we did, I don't know, a few years ago, we spent many, many, many meetings going through every department line by line. Uh, we'll let the finance committee do their thing. And then, um, you know, We'll keep in touch and then if there's anything that a department head needs to i guess appeal to us about that the finance committee is saying that absolutely can't be done then you know we can certainly meet and talk about those things but then we'll get back together uh when we get a little bit more fine-tuned on this budget and you know iron out any rough rough spots that we need to iron out if that makes sense yeah i think it's worked well over the last couple of years that the way that 
refinance has done and then brought it back to us. And, you know, if we need to hash things out between the, the two boards, then that's what we do. And I think it's worked well. Right. Finance feel the same way? They on the board with that? We're on, on board, board with that. I think that it works well. And, um, and uh, I like it where we uh, are able to separate a little bit so we can ask questions. Um, it's not too big of a meeting. Um, and uh, we can just focus on just the one department that night and we don't go through a whole meeting. So I do like it to have it separate. Sounds good. All right, well, um, next we have one last thing for finance. Uh, we have a reserve fund transfer and I'll read this real quick. And so from the select board, um, I need a motion to approve a request for a reserve fund transfer to account number 1515300 for $35,000 for the settlement of Hieronymus v. Town of Hadley. So I'll move that. All right, I got Jane and then Joyce, was that a second? Certainly. Okay, all right. Um, any discussion on that? Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Joyce Kevitz? Yes. Thank you. And then I guess we need the Finance Committee to also uh, vote on that. I'm sorry, I don't understand what the vote is about. So we have come to a uh, settlement agreement on North Hadley Village Hall. And so as part of that settlement agreement, we have to pay some money. And so in order to make that amount, uh, we need some of the money out of the reserve fund uh, and transfer it so that way we can uh, write a check. I see, so this isn't the full amount. This is just a, an amount you need to cover. Yeah, the, this, this is an amount that we need just to, to complete the settlement agreement basically. Okay, thank you. Where's the money coming from? Is it coming, did you say the finance reserve? Yes. And what will, what will the balance be afterwards? For, for legal, well, for, for legal, it's going into a le the legal account and that only has about 14,000 left. So, and we are definitely gonna spend that before the end of the year. So that 35,000, we, we need the full 35,000. I think much, Amy's much question was how much is left in the reserve account when we take this out? No, nothing has come out of the reserve Nothing's account. Yeah, and um, that was boosted to 100,000 at the fall town meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would be the balance. Thanks, Jane. So six, 65. Yeah. Do I have a motion? On this from the finance committee. Val or uh, Dylan or anybody want to make a motion to approve the $35,000 transfer um, for the um, from the finance reserve. Account? I'll make a motion to approve the, the transfer. I'll second it. Okay. So um, any other discussion? No. If we can do a roll call, Jennifer. Roll call, Fiden. Yes. Hood. Yes. Barstow Mans. Yes. And Le Lexi, is it Levine or Levine? Levine. Levine, sorry. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that's it for Triboard, I believe. So if uh, if you guys want to adjourn, that's fine, or stick around, whatever you'd like. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we'll keep on going to uh, consent agenda. We have warrants AP 2233, AP 2233S, AP 2232S, AP 2232, and PR 2217. We have minutes from March 3rd, 2021, March 8th, 2021, 
Pioneer Valley Planning Commission Joint Transportation Committee appointment, Bill Dwyer as a member. Pioneer Valley Planning Commission Joint Transportation Committee alternate member, Scott McCarthy. And Chapter 90 approval. Um, oh, can you pull the Chapter 90, please? Okay, we'll pull Chapter 90. All right, so moved. Second. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any discussion on this? Roll call, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Noah Skevitz? Yes, except for Scott McCarthy. Okay, thank you. And are we not doing chapter 90 tonight or we just wanna talk about that separately? Okay. All right, uh, next is public comments. 5.1 on the agenda. Um, we'll do public comments for 15 minutes. Please limit your comments to three minutes each so that others have an opportunity to speak. If you're here for public comments, raise your hand. And Rob Baranowski. You're, you're muted, sir. I'm you. Hey, that works. So um, Rob Baranowski, um, many of you remember me from last year on the RV discussions with conservation. I uh, just wanted to bring some awareness to what's going on now. Um, during the last town meeting, a uh, bylaw was voted into place, uh, was put in by the planning board calling for an RV offset, uh, front of the property 50 feet, back of the property 40 feet, and the sides, it's either 10 or 15 feet. Um, currently, uh, this is being challenged in a lawsuit. The town has spent about $5,800 right now and it hasn't even got to trial yet um, on this lawsuit um, and so they're going to spend a lot more of this and I just wanted to make the town aware of that <clears throat> you know again rather than working with the landowners and the RV owners and coming up with a solution this was kind of back ended in it was a surprise to even conservation when this was put into the bylaw last year and voted on and I just want to make the town aware of that this is just going to be the first of many lawsuits coming up because it's going to affect again back to the entire permitting process on the RVs along the riverbank. And after going through town, the way this is written, there are many RVs parked in driveways that are within 50 feet of the road that because of this new ordinance, they're gonna be out of compliance also. So, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Anybody else? Bill, did you have something? No, all right, sorry, sorry you're unmuted. Uh, all right, last call, public comment. Okay, we'll keep going. Uh, town administrator report. Carolyn, do you wanna do that? Sure, just some dates. Um, just a reminder that um, March 25th is the last day to pull papers for any candidates. Um, the good news, I think for everybody, I'm sitting here on this remote meeting is that the governor has extended remote meetings until July 15th. Isn't so, that wonderful? <laughs> so I just wanted to let the, you know that. Um, and just oh, a reminder God. that uh, uh, the pre-construction meeting for the Route 9 widening is tomorrow. So Scott and another member of his staff and myself will be attending that. This is not a public meeting. It's not getting updates and things like that. It's really to go, it's a true pre-construction meeting and how it's gonna impact certain things, working closely with DPW. Um, but I will get some, imp I will get, I, that is my question. I have spoken with, so, with the coordinator of this meeting that I do need to get some updates on dates of start and impact and phases, if they can give me any clarity. Um, the, the only timeline that I got over the phone <laughs> was that it, this is going to be till about 2026. Okay. It's a long, long haul, this project. So. Yeah, it is. We, we, we're going to be um, looking at a lot of things to prepare for that. Oh. Okay, is that it? That's it on the agenda. So any That's it, sorry. Yep. Geez, that was short and sweet there, Carolyn. <laughs> well, I, I knew I was going to take up a lot of your time and you didn't want to hear any more from me tonight. <laughs> we, will, we will always listen to you. No problem. <laughs> I'm remembering that. <laughs> Joey, see any announcements tonight? Uh, you know, I do have a couple. Is, are we at announcements already? My goodness. Yeah. Uh, 
So I'd like to extend uh, the select board condolences to Arthur Munt's family. He was a uh, one of our uh, Hadley residents. Um, family of David Haskell, we extend our condolences to him. And um, I didn't do quite justice to um, David Farn that had passed away. Um, I know that I said he was on the board of health, but David, since he had moved to town, had become really a Hadley resident. He may not have been a local Hadley resident, but he certainly made himself well known from the time that he came into Hadley. He was, a, he was one of our Cub Scout leaders. He did little league coaching. Uh, he was on park and rec for many years. He was also on the school board. And then the last 24 years he spent on the board of health. So David certainly did um, give a lot of time to Hadley. He was also on the Neurotic Rail Trail Advisory Committee. And if you ever walk the rail trail at any time during the past 10 years, um, even though he was gonna be 90, he was out there every day, either between here or UMass walking around out there, um, doing his walk on a daily routine every morning. So. Uh, we certainly do extend our condolences to Michael Farnham and his family um, on the passing of Dave. He was a well, um, really appreciated man here in Hadley. So our, certainly our condolences to him and his family. And that's it for me tonight. Anybody else? Jane? A reminder that tomorrow morning is the last time to sign up for tickets for the roast beef dinner, which is being cooked by Katie Day, um, Stevie Devine, and uh, sorry, Pete Ben Ben. Um, there, you can call me at the senior center or call anyone at the senior center and leave your name, and we'll get you on the list. It's a to-go dinner to be picked up Sunday between three and four, and you can reheat it whenever you want, because we're not sending it out hot, given the current weather. Can you uh, put me for five, Jane? I gotcha. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, Jane, put me down for one more also. Okay. David, can we do one more call for um, annual report dedication and the Fred Oakley Award? please? Yes. Um, when did I receive a couple? Um, I'd like them by Friday, but you know, we can, we can flex on that a little bit, but I would like them very soon. So I can get going on the annual report. And they just need to send an email to info at hadleyma.org. Please. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, then I could get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer, roll call, please. Roll call, Phil? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. And Wiskevitz? Yes. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.